All right, let's well, go then. You had a few press, you had a press release just yesterday about education. Kind of your latest thoughts on all these debates. Yeah, I'm ready to sit down and negotiate the differences. Uh, agitated that the speaker has sent out op-eds in members' districts directly attacking members of the Senate for trying to have responsible governance. And so we, we, we responded yesterday. I responded in kind, trying to defend our members. A few of my members have written pieces in their papers that will go out uh, this week responding to the mischaracteriz mischaracterization of what we actually passed. Uh, but very disappointed that he's resorted to those type of tactics uh, and want to have open, honest negotiations uh, in the public. I would love for people to know the real differences between the two bills. And he's saying that in terms of all teachers um, getting a pay raise, he said it's misinformation. Um, I guess, how would you kind of counter what he's saying on that specific topic? Well, first off, uh, the Speaker and I and the Governor meet every week. And he's yet to bring up a specific complaint about the bill. It's just, you can only pass exactly what we sent you or don't pass anything. And that's unacceptable, as, as I've told you all a few weeks in a row now. But what he is saying is entirely misleading. The bill that we passed has a pay raise for every teacher in Oklahoma. It has a pay raise for every reading specialist, every counselor, all of the instructional support, his just gives it to the classroom teacher, it gives it 2,500. Ours, the lowest pay increase is 3,000. And then if you've been in the classroom for 15 years or more, it's 6,000 and there's gradations between there. What he's saying is misleading on people who don't know the history of this building. In 2017, when we passed the largest pay raise in state history, the language that's in our bill now is verbatim to the language we passed in that. What you have to do is go in and go do what's known as a budget limits bill, which we have communicated to them that we are wanting to do if this bill passes, to force those schools that are already paying above the minimum to pay that as well. But baked into our bill, baked into the financial analysis of our bill, is a complete pay raise for every teacher in Oklahoma, including those at DOJ, uh, I mean uh, DOC, OJA, and Career Tech. Uh, of those different levels, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and 6,000, depending on years of service. Uh, it's just simply untrue. So just so I'm understanding correctly, um, it doesn't have to say in the amendment um, requiring um, a pay raise for every single district so that a district doesn't use it for something else. It's a separate... It's a budget limits bill at the end when we say you shall, but we appropriated the money in it sufficient to pay for everyone exactly like he and I did in 2017 when we passed the largest pay raise in state history. You've asked Senator McCourney about this and uh, the speaker has brought this up multiple times about the 32 districts that aren't going to be receiving money because of the for funding formula. Do you mind addressing that and, and speaking to the reason that these school districts don't get that typically under the formula? Yeah, if you're off the formula, there's a reason. You have such a ha huge ad valorem base that you're paying per pupil much over the state average. So uh, some of these schools are, are getting twenty to 30000 per pupil now that are off the formula. So we, we would require them to do the pay raise, but they would not get additional dollars unless the amount of money that we uh, encourage them or force them to spend takes them and puts them back on the formula. That will probably happen for one or two schools. And then conference, the speaker was saying something that the next steps would be going into a conference committee with, I think, four people. Um, he would bring to the table, you would bring four, I don't know if it was exactly four, but um, is that something that you were open to, kind of having that conversation? I want to have negotiations in the public. And so I'm willing to have those. If he wants to have them in closed doors, we can do that. I said that two weeks ago, that I wanted to have a small group of senators, a small group of House members, and a small delegation from the executive branch to sit down and iron out our differences. Here's the thing. We're all Republicans. We all want more money into the classroom. We all want school choice. It's really a detailed difference on how we do the pay raise and do we treat kids separately based on their zip code. The, the House plan ba treats you differently based on where your zip code is. If you live in a Toke, Oklahoma, you get about an additional $750. If you live in Oklahoma City, you get an additional $40. Uh, 
and it treats kids who are in different areas of the state vastly different. That's unacceptable, uh, but we'll work through those differences. We're not that far apart in the whole scheme of things unless he's unwilling to negotiate. And th th henceforth, he has just said, you pass my bill exactly as we sent it, or we won't hear anything. He's moderated that a little bit lately, so I'm hopeful that it'll actually come to the table. The, the op-eds and the press release this week were a huge step backwards. Off of education, um, uh -huh. I don't know if you've, if you've taken a question on this or not, um, but on broadband, um, you're obviously, Dina's adamant that the legislators told him to do this. You won't tell me which legislators exactly, but I talked to 12 legislators and leadership that told me, yeah. told me they did not tell him. Are you any closer to kind of figuring out what exactly went down, like with the how DPS got this 20 million, who authorized Dina to do this? Is there? We're still trying to connect some dots. Uh, you caught me after last week's press conference and asked me that, and the, it stands true that I, I didn't have that conversation. The broadband uh, group that, or actually the ARPA group that looked at it and Guidehouse who looked at it said it wasn't qualified for ARPA dollars, and so it didn't necessarily get denied by a vote of the ARPA committee, but our, our paid consultants who look at the legalities of it said that it wasn't qualified. I think there's a disagreement um, with some that want to get that Oakland or whatever it's called, uh, which really covers from Lawton up to Tulsa area versus someone who wants a complete statewide coverage and, and the Senate leadership on that has been looking at a statewide coverage. But as far as how that money got designated, what was it, like 19 or 20 million dollars? Um, that did not come through the legislative process or nor was it, I was not consulted on it. Is it Concerning that an agency just saw a project in the ARPA portal and just like I'm going to pull this out and fund it myself. Is that concerning to you? That this I, I want to get to the bottom of it. Um, obviously, we've empowered the Broadband Council to make decisions based on what those investments are, but it's supposed to be about broadband. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we'll get to the bottom of it. Just one last question on, on this. Being um, as adamant that legislators told him to, I've talked. Somebody said they did it. Have you talked to some people in your caucus? Are you confident that nobody in your caucus authorized Fina to use this money for DPS OK Oakland Oak project? I have not talked to all 40 members of the caucus or the eight Democrats over here, so I can't say no one talked to them. But as far as I know, no one authorized that. Okay. Have you read this loft report? No, I haven't. Uh, so I'm aware of it. Uh, and uh, you're talking about the central purchasing yes. one? I have not had a chance to read it yet. Uh, the, Mike Jackson was trying to brief me up on it this week, but I was caught up in the education conversation, so I have not been read into that yet. What do you think of the state purchasing director resigning the day before the... You know, it's, uh, the timing of it's very uh, suspicious, uh, and so uh, I've been told by OMS that it seems completely unrelated, but uh, I've been told that indirectly. Uh, but I'd like to look at uh, the timing of that and see if, see if there's a, a relationship there at all. You didn't mention it throughout the entirety of the report. Okay. So. Again, I haven't read the report, but I find it very, uh, I don't think there's real, a whole lot of coincidences on these type of things. Uh, Going to have another economic development uh, group next week, trying to still work on the advisory group uh, have been busy with other things this week so haven't made a lot of headway on creating that but we're going to get there and we'll have a meeting we'll, we'll send out a more formal notice but Wednesday or Thursday of next week depending on committees. Do you have a chair yet? No not yet I'm still vacillating on whether I want to chair it or not that's that's the real hold up. Chair three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the economic development um, I was in prior yesterday and they were um, Dave Stewart was said he was still under NDA, so we couldn't answer much of my questions. It's probably the same way, but just asked Project Ocean. I still told us today that they have made uh, uh, Project Ocean kind of made an application for the Lead Act. I know the Lead Act expires on April fifteenth. Does the application, unless somebody takes advantage of it, does that application consider someone taking advantage of it so that money won't go to GR? Or is I think it's really somebody has to be under a contract. Okay. So just application is. If it's I don't think the application suffices on what we passed. It's my understanding. I think somebody has to be contractually obligated. It doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, you're not going to turn dirt by in, what, 10 days or 9 days. But you sign a contract between here and there. Anything else? All right. Thank you.